So I guess today is going to be another edition of, hey, you can't blame Dak for this one, except the Cowboys are. Micah Parsons, after the game, blamed Dak. The Cowboys' own social media account <laughs> on Twitter blamed Dak. Dak now has the same number of playoff wins as Brock Purdy. The Rams, the Eagles, and the Niners, with two different quarterbacks, have gotten to NFC championships. Dak has a playoff win. I've said it for years. He's Kirk Cousins with a better brand. That's it. It's time to start drafting quarterbacks. When Brady was the GOAT in winning Super Bowls, the Patriots drafted three quarterbacks in the third round and Jimmy Garoppolo in the second. Dak doesn't have much of a market. Nobody would want him for that price tag, but I'd make calls. I'd do the same with Kirk Cousins. They're the same guy. You watch Brock Purdy and Dak. Did you see a big gap? Neither has a special arm. Both are mobile, but not, like, uniquely mobile. I watched Dak face two rookie quarterbacks in the last three weeks, Sam Howell and Brock Purdy. Dak was the least effective of both, all three. And I couldn't see the gap. Sam Howell actually looked more talented. He got drafted, I think, in a higher round than Dak. Brock Purdy didn't, but do you see the gap? You're paying the Ferrari price, and in big games, Dak is a Civic. All these years, we're waiting for a signature moment. God, we got one in Mahomes' second game. You get great signature moments from the all-timers. Aaron's got them, Favre, Brady, Manning, Ben, and you don't have to wait very long to get them. How many years do I have to wait for one great moment? I looked this up this morning. A week ago, Geno Smith who at one time was viewed as a bust, got created 22 first downs against this Niner defense. Dak got 15. Geno Smith was 50% on third downs. Dak was 5 of 15. Geno Smith averaged almost a yard more per, per completion. Geno Smith was more productive playing with rookies everywhere for Seattle and with a defensive coach. Mike McCarthy's not the issue here. Yeah, the last play was goofy, but he had a field goal kicker that, you know, was in his head. Tony Pollard not available second half, and he doesn't have a single unit. He's got good players, but not a single great unit. The Cowboys' secondary has a star corner, but they need to draft another one. They've got one linebacker I love, and that's about it. I mean, San Francisco's the better team, but Dak Prescott, folks, we're waiting. I got Patrick Mahomes playing on a leg and winning. I have Joe Burrow with three backup offensive linemen on the road winning. I've got Jalen Hurts playing at about 75, 70, 80% in that ballpark and winning. Dak didn't have Tony Pollard for a half. Not good enough. Another clunker. And again, we're waiting for these signature moments. How long do we have to wait? Dak's a lot closer to Daniel Jones, I have to break it to you, and Kirk Cousins than he is to the better quarterbacks in this league. Did you see a gap? I'll just ask that. Him and Brock Purdy, where's the big gap? Neither a great arm, neither wildly mobile. I, I would argue Purdy, his decision-making, pretty good for a rookie. I mean, he's had some near picks, Dak had two and should have had a pick six. Um, but, you know, Dak's good at the mic. Dak says the right stuff. Dak's intangibles are amazing. And after the loss, you know, he's hard not to like. Really love Dak the guy. Don't even really like his big game performances. It's time to make calls. It's time to get on the phone. It's, it's time, second, third pick in the draft, maybe not the first. See what you got out there. But this isn't working. The Rams, the Eagles, the Niners, primary rivals with two different quarterbacks, flawed rosters, have gotten to the NFC Championship. Dallas has a playoff win. It's time. All right, um, you know, I said last week, I said if the Bengals were healthy against Buffalo, 
I don't know what day I said this, but I said J Mac is my witness. I think they would blow out the Bills. I was wrong. They weren't healthy, missing three offensive linemen, and still blew out the Bills. 27 10 felt like 47 10. It was never close over in the first series. And something I've been on for years, the gap between the defensive head coaches and the offensive head coaches, it's getting wider. Sean McDermott wasn't even playing checkers. Zach Taylor, the offensive coach, who many people doubted, myself included early, built a precise, quick passing game in the snow, right, to protect his banged-up offensive line. To move the sticks, keep Josh off the field. You could tell from the first series, they leaned into what Burrow does. Accuracy, protect the banged up O-line, precision, efficient routes. Counter punching with their run game, which has been better than anybody wants to acknowledge for years. Buffalo in the snow, throwing deep balls up the sideline. Difficult, low percentage passes. Didn't use Josh Allen's legs at all, it seemed to me, in the first half. Finally did first series of the second half. But what you saw is what we've complained about all year. Buffalo has no offensive identity. They've just got a really talented quarterback. I've said this about the Chargers and their defensive coach. They're just calling plays. And think about this. I was texting somebody in the league. When you play in snow, what you don't want is your receivers having to run deep routes, look up in the snow. Throw them short stuff. They can go eye-to-eye with a quarterback. You're playing in a snowstorm. Thank God there was no wind. Stephon Diggs is frustrated. The fans are frustrated. All year long, we said this, and Bill's media, Buffalo fans get defensive. Sean McDermott's had six years. The offensive line's still a disaster. Andy Reid, offensive coach, solved his in one off season. The Chargers, give them credit, solved theirs in the season. Six years, Sean McDermott. What's wrong with the offensive line? It's still awful. The run game without Josh Allen, awful. I mean, I was thinking about this game before it started, and I'm thinking, what do you do in a snow game? Oh, huge advantage, Buffalo. You can just run the ball with Josh Allen. They didn't in the entire first half. Their first series was three and out. You have a week to prepare, and it's three and out? Now, some of this, remember, there were eight coaches left last weekend. One was a defensive coach. And the gap to me is obvious. Sean McDermott didn't adjust. Sean McDermott had no offensive vision. We know Burrow is terrific. The comp for Tom Brady's right on. The kid sees the field well, crazy accurate. Um, His situational excellence is, there's not a lot I've ever seen that's as good. By the way, Kansas City privately was rooting for Buffalo to win. They don't want to face Cincinnati. The Chiefs do not want to face Cincinnati. Josh Allen will make mistakes. He's wildly entertaining and wild. Burrow doesn't make any mistakes. And he's really accurate. But to me, the takeaway was, it's almost like when you go on a road trip with a bunch of kids, Cincinnati went on a road trip with a bunch of kids, and they packed snacks, iPads, chargers for the five-hour car ride. The Bills were like, oh, you kids were going to get hungry? Nobody brought a charger? Was Buffalo even prepared? Forget a second punch. They had no first punch. Their first series was three and out. With that defensive culture and that defensive staff, all these years, they got defensive players everywhere. Yeah, they draft and develop that side of the ball great. O-line, run game. Brian Dable, the further he gets away, the more of a mess this team is on the offensive side of the ball. And I don't know if Sean McDermott's the guy. My my guess this morning is after that, that was a moment. It means something. You can't brush it off. That's bad. There were four coaches. You start looking at all these coaches yesterday. Three were offensive, and then there was McDermott. Yeah, the Cowboys lost, but they seemed prepared. They seemed prepared. Buffalo didn't at all and made no adjustments. Bills had four times the penalties of road Cincinnati. We're dominated time of possession. Buffalo only had 63 yards rushing. Terrible on third down. Almost half 
the first downs of Joe Burrow. We know Burrow's great, but that was an absolute coaching mismatch. Anybody that doubts Zach Taylor, that's over. That was that was a heavyweight and a lightweight coaching. It wasn't close. No adjustments, no game plan, no identity, just calling plays. Bad. Bad look for Buffalo. Can't go status quo. You got to do something because that is not getting better. It feels like this morning, Kansas City, Cincinnati, the gap's getting wider, not closer. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.